Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So hopefully this is a fun one today. What we're going to be doing today is having a little exploration of a, uh, an interesting problem or uh, a group of uh, interesting questions. Yeah, so if you consider everybody in the world uh, as, a, as a network of uh, Facebook friends, is there a group of 100 people that are all friends with each other? Is there a group of 1,000 people where everyone in that group is uh, friends with everyone else in the, uh, in the group? Is there a group of 10,000? And uh, really, one of the most interesting questions here is what is the largest collection of people on uh, something like Facebook that are all friends with each other? Interesting question. Uh, these questions, interestingly enough, are called uh, the clique problem. So if you imagine there's a collection of people, some of whom are friends and some of whom are not, uh, or in other words, if they're just a bunch of nodes and uh, some of the nodes are connected and some of them are not, then uh, you'll have something like what we've got here on the screen. So we've got a bunch of little faces and uh, the lines indicate connections. And a clique is uh, a group of friends that are all connected with each other. Uh, it's pronounced a clique in this context, often in the uh, mathematical problem, but uh, I think in social sciences, they often seem to say clique. Yeah, but either way, cliques, cliques, same thing. Uh, so here what I've done is uh, illustrated a small clique of three people within this uh, little graph. Uh, so you can see here that all of these people are connected to each other via the red lines. So they have other friends too, but for a clique, uh, everyone has to be connected to everyone else in order for it to be a, uh, a clique. Uh, you can see here that we can't actually add this blue person since the blue person, if we tried to add them, they're friends with uh, yellow over there. Uh, so we can't add blue here because blue and pink are not friends. So we couldn't add orange either. So in order to add a new member to a clique, the new member has to be friends with all of the other members of the clique. And uh, so for this particular clique, this little clique of three, we can't actually add anybody else. So yellow, red, and pink is what's called a maximal clique. We can't add anybody else in this particular network uh, without breaking that clique. So any of the other three people, if we try to add them, there's one or more in the current clique that um, they're not friends with. Uh, here we have another clique of three people. So this is just to show that there can be more than one maximal clique uh, per graph. Uh, another clique of three people just here. So once again, we couldn't add uh, anybody else uh, to this clique. Yeah, since there's nobody else in this particular graph that's friends with all of the three clique members so far. Okay, so the largest uh, clique of all in a graph is called the largest maximal clique. Um, so it's the largest clique uh, in the entire graph. You can't add any more, and there's no other larger maximal cliques that uh, have more people in them. So uh, as it happens in this particular graph here, the um, largest maximal clique uh, is this one here that we've got, uh, or the other one. So it's, it's a three-member clique. So there's, uh, once again, there can be ties for the largest maximal clique, but yellow, red, and blue is uh, one of the largest maximal cliques for this particular chart. Uh, so if we move on to a slightly larger uh, graph, we'll start to see that this becomes a little bit more daunting. So finding um, a three clique here, for example, is not terribly difficult. I've highlighted a three clique just here. But the question is, um, with all of these nodes and the friendships between them, is three the uh, largest maximal clique? Is it even a maximal clique? Can we add another member to that clique? Uh, it's not so easy just looking at this chart. It just looks like spaghetti, really. There's lines going all over the place and it's kind of hard to tell who's friends with who, but uh, I will say that there is actually a four click in here, yes. So have a bit of a look at this and see if you can find it. It's difficult to see um, just by looking at it. Yeah, you really need, okay. Uh, it's difficult to see just by looking at it, yeah. And there it is, a four click. A, C, D, H is a click of four members, all of which are friends with each other. So I've claimed that A, C, D, H is a four click. Fair enough, but we have to check it. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about checking if that is actually a legitimate clique. So that's fairly easy to do. What we have to consider is that all of these people have to be friends with each other in order for this to be a legitimate clique. So one of the interesting things about these non-directional graphs, oh, this is a, a graph, did I mention? This is <laughs> a mathematical graph that we're talking about here, yeah. This is um, vertices and edges. Now anyway, one of, one of the things about these um, clique graphs or charts is that it doesn't really matter where you draw these things. So we could stretch this out however we want. And uh, so long as everybody's still connected the same, um, we'll still have the same graph. So if we rearrange A, C, D, and H from the uh, previous slide, then what we'll see is something like this. And uh, it becomes fairly clear that all of these people are indeed friends with each other. 
So there is a four click hidden somewhere in this data. We know what it is now, ACDH. And it was easy enough to check when I suggested that ACDH was indeed a four click. So given a supposed click of four, uh, we can easily tell if everybody's friends or not. You just have to check all of the connections one after another. But the question is, how did I find that four click? Now, I didn't just look at this chart and figure it out with my eyesight. <laughs> that would be tedious. Um, I actually used a brute force method because um, finding the largest maximal clique is NP. Yes, it's one of those interesting puzzles that for one reason or another um, seems to uh, increase in uh, difficulty exponentially, even though uh, checking results is uh, very, very easy. In order to find that clique of four, I actually brute forced and checked all 1024 possibilities. So this is the great puzzle, really, one of the biggest puzzles in uh, all of mathematics and uh, one of the Millennium Prize puzzles, uh, really, is uh, does P equal NP? Uh, it's easy to check if a suggested clique uh, is indeed a legitimate uh, clique, given a graph. We only need to check if uh, all of the members are friends. But uh, given N different people, there's something like 2 to the power of N different possible cliques that could be uh, the maximum. So the time of this problem here, finding the largest maximal clique, increases with the uh, proportion something like a uh, big O, two to the power N. Uh, there are different tricks and techniques that you can do to get around that, but it increases uh, exponentially, uh, which means that uh, it's, uh, it's a P versus NP problem. So NP actually means um, non-deterministically polynomial time. Which means if you happened to just guess the largest clique, if you just picked five random letters out and it happened to be a clique, um, you could check in uh, polynomial time whether that was uh, indeed a, a legitimate clique or not. Uh, but deterministically finding the largest maximal clique is, uh, is exponential time to any known algorithms. It might not be. It might not be. I don't know. <laughs> So I want to show a little program here. This is just a bit of fun. So we're just going to talk about matrix representation of the graphs. Um, all I've got here is uh, the members represented here with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J along the top and then along the bottom. And if you go along the A, wherever you see a crosshatch, uh, that just means that they are connected. So A is friends with C. And wherever there's a dot or a full stop, that just means that they're not connected. Now, wherever there's a dot, that means that they're not connected. So A is not friends with B, uh, A is friends with C and D in this particular chart, so on and so on. So you'll see actually that this, is, uh, this, this graph is mirrored along the diagonal. Um, so if A is friends with C, then C is also friends with A. Uh, so what we're going to have a look at now is um, the clique playground program. So let's just have a bit of a, let's just have a, bit of a run. Mm -hmm. This, my friends, is the clique playground. Uh, but let's have a bit of a let's have a bit of an explore. So what we can see here is a, a rather large graph uh, representing the people in columns and rows. So I'm being the uh, I'm controlling the cursor just here with the W A S D keys, and what you can see is that everybody is friends with themselves uh, for this particular um, version of the program. Uh, it just happens to make things easier uh, if you do it that way. But um, what you can also see down the bottom there, we've got some keys. So if you want to shuffle these people around, then you hold shift and then push the button. So if we move F over here to A, uh, what we can see there, it goes A, F, B, C, D, C. You can change the order around. Or we can just hit R and create a completely random order anytime we like. Uh, a capital R is reset the order back to uh, alphabetic. Uh, what else have we got? Um, we can turn friends on and off if you like. Yeah, something like that. And we can also get a new graph if we want. So the number of people, we might choose something like, um, I don't know, 30. Uh, approximate number of friendships, I think maybe about uh, 140 friendships, pretty good. And the seed, we'll just use zero for the random seed. Okay, and here we have another collection of cliques, another graph. So it just generates um, a, a graph uh, randomly. And um, yeah, you could draw this out with uh, little faces and lines if you wanted, but this happens to be a nice way to represent it. These numbers on the side, these are the number of friends that each person has. So this 10 just here is the number of friends that B has, or the number of connections they have. Uh, maybe they have more friends, I don't know. <laughs> We'd have to talk to B about that. But um, 13 just here is the number of connections that, did I do that right? G has. An interesting way to think about finding the largest maximal clique 
uh, when it's represented like this, an interesting way to think about it is that you're trying to make the largest square that you can along the diagonal. Uh, fascinating stuff. So do you see right here, you've got um, in the I and J column, we've got a little square just there, a little square of four people. Well, that little square just there means that I is friends with J and J is friends with I. And what we can see over the side here on uh, the O column, what you can see there is that there's another two hashes uh, aligned with that I and J. And what that means is that O is also friends with both I and J. So if we grab O just here and we shift him over to the I and J, what we end up with is a square of three members. Now we'd be looking for somebody that has um, that triple aligned, I, J, O. Um, let's see, that's not one there. No, nope, that's not one there either. So there's no more. Yeah, that's actually the larger, or that's actually a maximal click just there. We can't add anyone else. Oh, here's a nice one here. So this, I just hit it, hitting R a few times to generate a, a random order of the same data. Uh, so it didn't actually change the data at all, just randomized it um, in the hopes that we can see something interesting. Um, so here we've got um, a square here I can see in just about the uh, middle. We've got V, E, and W are a clique of three. But if we go over here to the side, uh, I can also see in the rather strangely named left square bracket column, <laughs> Um, there's also another three elements that align with V, E, and W. So if I just move the cursor over there like that and we hold shift and we move it over to these three, what we can see is we've made a clique of four. Yeah, there you go. So I thought that was a fun and interesting way to think about the clique problem is um, we're trying to shuffle these uh, rows and columns around so that we can make the largest possible uh, square. So the other thing about this program is that if you hit B, it'll, uh, it'll brute force or it'll just run through everything. It'll find the largest clique and it'll tell you how big it is. So let's hit B now and we'll see if our clique of four was actually the largest. Off it goes. This does take a little while. Uh, so, so far it's found a, a largest clique of four. Uh, you can see up there the uh, total number of cliques that it's got to check. That is uh, 2 to the power of 30. Uh, there we go. So it says the largest clique found is 4 friends. There's 11 ties. And the search time was 23 seconds. Not that it matters. But uh, an example of the uh, 4 clique that it found is D, G, and Q. Yeah, but we also found a 4 clique. Yeah, just there. Uh, so the largest maximal click of Facebook, it's not known. So Facebook is obviously a network of not just 10 or 20 people, it's, uh, it's millions of people. And uh, not even Facebook knows the answer to the uh, largest maximal click. Um, it might be possible to figure it out. If uh, P equals NP, then maybe there's an algorithm out there that could solve something like that and run on a classical computer. But as far as people know, uh, as far as they guess, there is no such, a, such algorithm. Other than that, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and have a good one.